Um, again, today we'll, we'll do some, um, we'll start off today by doing some, some research. I'll just turn the computer on left hand. Up. Left hand up. Oh, no, it's mine. Oh, yeah, it's oh, there you go. Let's go over here. On the left side. Reach around the back. There's a button. There you go. Yeah, you gotta reach around. Okay, so uh, again, we'll start off by uh, doing some uh, research into just how to do research online as far as keyword research. Later on, we'll go into Google and, and we'll learn how much to price. But for to, for now, we'll just do some basic research. Um, in this case, uh, first thing is um, is is you know which browser do you use, right? You got all these browsers down here. We have you know the three main browsers: Firefox, Chrome, Safari. And Opera, I would say, um, are the most popular. Now, of course, the most popular one in the world today is Chrome, used by most people. Uh, the downfall, of course, of Chrome is it's made by Google. And, and, of course, what does Google do with all the info you use on Chrome? They track it and keep track of all that. In fact, you can go to a website and see all the information that Google knows about you. They keep track of you know where you're at, how long you log in, every word that you search. They keep track of all of that. Even if you're not logged in, they know who you are and where you're at. And even they track even your, your family and friends. Yes? Oh, there is no password. Just hit you just hit return. You mean on these computers? It should it should and there should be no password. Okay, so um uh -huh. So what I would do is, is use different computers or different, you know, I, I maybe search on my iPad mm -hmm. and then I'll, I'll buy on my desktop. Yeah. Yeah. So and then of course Safari is by Apple and I think they, they track less. <laughs> I'm sure they track somewhat, but track less. And then of course Firefox is a uh, um, a nonprofit. You know, so Firefox is the original Netscape. So I don't know if you know the history of the browser, but of course the first browser was made by uh, um, by Tim Berners-Lee, and uh, he's the one who invented HTML and the browser. And um, the first commercial browser was called Netscape, and it was in Mountain View over there. In fact, I went and visited their headquarters one time in '97. I remember that. But uh, beside the point, um, they kind of Netscape went away, but they became Firefox, and they changed from a business to a nonprofit and they're the Mozilla. Dot org foundation and you know their claim to fame is they're fast private and fearless and that they're not going to share the data with Google but that doesn't mean that they're not sharing data Google's still tracking you no matter what with cookies and other sites that you go to and properties so even though they say they're fast private and fearless which is all good and fun online they're not doing it but the third party people are going to do it where of course Chrome is owned by Google and they don't, they're not going to tell you they're fast, private, and uh, secure because they want to track you. So, you know, the some somewhat ways is to use the incognito mode. Okay, yeah. Well, if you're looking, I'd use it for marketing because I do my research in that so that it already knows what I've been searching on this on this computer right here from the IP address and all that information. So I tend to use incognito mode, but that doesn't, you know, that's somewhat secure. You know, it doesn't track your browsing history, cookies and site data, information entered in forms. 
It might be visible as websites you visited, your employer or school, your internet service provider. So it's somewhat more secure, but it's not perfect. Of course, the only way that you could be really secure is to use a different type, to use the Tor browser. That's probably the only way, or VPN, vi virtual private network. So the Tor, yeah, so we could just search Tor browser. The Tor browser was invented by the uh, Navy. Um, oh. Yeah, the Tor browser. It's a it's a browser like like you know all the other browsers, and it 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 bounces your data around the internet so that you it doesn't recognize the exact IP address or, um, you know so, and and so all your data is being bounced around the internet so they can't keep track of who you are where you're at. Uh, again, bouncing your communications around a distributed network of relays run by volunteers all around the world. It prevents somebody watching your internet connection from learning what sites you visit. It prevents the sites you visit from learning your physical location. And it lets act, you, you access sites which are blocked. Um, yeah, no, I, I mean, it just depends. I mean, the security comes down to not necessarily the browser or anything. It's, it comes down to encryption. So encryption is, 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 you know, if you don't know what encryption is, of course, encryption is the data scrambling, right? The Enigma system in, in World War II, right? You guys see the game, the uh, imitation game? Did you see the movie, The Imitation Game, right? And the, the British were trying to, um, you know, unlock the Enigma, the, the, the code that the Nazis were using. Well, it's the same thing online, you know. Everything is needs to be encrypted now. And if you notice, see the S right here? So you always want to look for the S in the, in the browser address. That means it's been encrypted. And um, you need to set your site up. In fact, Google will rank you higher in, in Google for having an encrypted website. They want to see the S in there. They want you to have a secure site. That's one of their ranking things. So they'll rank you higher according if you have a secure site than if your site is not secure. Yeah, there's a lock there as well, yes. Mm -hmm. Connection is secure. And so this, how it works is there are certificates issued. Um, this is a, a key system where there's a key that goes along with your data and then that key is unlocked and it unlocks the data at the other side. Same with your cell phone. You talking on your cell phone, it's encrypted. Because if it wasn't encrypted, then people would be able to hear, you know, just be able to tap into what you're saying. So when you're talking on your phone, it's totally encrypted as well. Uh, just the, the way the network works. And so, uh, again, you can see the information here. Um, about the encryption right here and it tells you what kind of encryption right here and here's your key valid certificate and so on um, I could show you how to set that up because I need to do that but the problem you run into as far as encryption and you can see the encryption right here <laughs> look at that it tells you what type of encryption as well and encryption is based upon and the algorithm it's using and it's usually based upon a bit depth, you know, 128-bit encryption is better than 64-bit encryption, which is better than, you know, and the bit depth just means how large the key is, right? How big is the number that it can convert the data. And so most of the encryption um, websites are encrypted today, like I said. And uh, um, you can see it all. Look at the, Here's the encryption right there. So we can't read that. But the other people at the other end, you know, the computer on the other side would be able to do that. So if you're doing your, your credit card transaction, it's going to be scrambled into this mess right here. But when it gets to the other side, it will be unencrypted on the other side. And so it, even if somebody, um, you know, is able to capture the bits going from one computer to the other, they won't be able to do anything. They need the other side. Does that make sense? Uh, you know, the, yeah, the biggest problem with being at those places is that um, they they can fake the Wi-Fi. And so instead of going through, let's say, Starbucks Wi-Fi, they can bring a little hub in there. And then your your phone will connect to that hub instead of the, 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 the other one. And so that data then is going through theirs, and then they can keep track of everything that's going through there. But even if it's encrypted, you know, they wouldn't be able to to unlock that and that's the other thing so they might be able to see what password you're typing in and things like that though that's the you know they're looking for more you know what is your password and you know your credit card information 
And it's hard to get that if you're using a secure network. You know, just because of the encryption that you see here. So Tor browser is probably the most uh, um, secure. I don't really use that. Um, usually when I'm doing research, I tend to use uh, Chrome or Firefox. I don't use Safari very often. Uh, Safari is a little bit of a... Um, it, it's, it's difficult for me because it doesn't have some of the tools, I guess. I don't know. I'm just not used to Safari. Um, I'm used to... the reason. I'm used to Firefox. The reason why I used to use Firefox a lot is because it kind of works the same on Windows as well as Mac, right? When you're on Windows, it looks the same. Everything works the same. The menu items are the same, right? Go to Mac, the menu items are the same. The software works on the same, right? Uh, I don't use Windows as much anymore. I only have Windows 7 still, but I know people have Windows 10, and they use the Edge browser. Anybody use the Edge? I have the Edge. You got the Edge? On your laptop? Yeah, okay, use Chrome mostly? Firefox, there you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yeah. Edge is a browser that comes pre installed on your Windows 10. It's Internet Explorer. Remember Internet Explorer? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they're not supporting it anymore. Yeah, they're not going to upgrade or anything if you have a. Old Internet Explorer, you should probably not be using it. If I had an old Windows system, I'd be using Firefox or Chrome or something. Or I guess you could use Edge. I don't know. Yeah, I haven't really upgraded to Windows. So, um, I haven't bought a Windows. I need to buy a Windows system, I guess, just to learn it a little bit. I still have Windows 7. And then, of course, you can set your browser up and, 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 and you know, so you can put a skin. See, I put the skin on here. See, I got my Totoro up there. You guys like Totoro? Who likes Totoro? We love Totoro. You don't know who Totoro is? You don't know who Totoro is? Oh, my God. Totoro. He's a tree spirit. All right. That's fine. Yeah. It's an anime. Yeah. Okay, Totoro is my, my tree spirit is up here. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's let's uh, let me talk a little bit about my research and how I do research. Of course, uh, you know most of the research I do is on Google itself, and so I kind of start with Google. So if I'm going to do anything from uh, just you know, if you watch the video, the Mutt Cuts video, uh, you know he talked about words. You know, remember the cheetah speed running, right? And so you know I tend to just start right here with Google and just type in and see what comes up. Um, again, you might want to be in incognito mode or private window mode here, just so that it's not keeping thinking about the things that you've already typed. Um, I mean, maybe you want to know the things you've already typed and how it relates to what you know is coming up. But again, if I go to Google here, and um, of course, uh, I you know the two kind of things that I market are stud finders and paintings. My wife does watercolor paintings and pottery. Hence. This is mine, but we both do pottery. But um, um, so, you know, we can type in water, color, artist, okay, or artist, and water. And now it says watercolor should be one word. Okay, so we type that in, and boom, you get stuff. What am I getting? Well, I'm getting a bunch of stuff that's random. And the reason why is because it's too general. Okay, so whenever you're typing, and I think, you know, I kind of tried to give you some assignments about words and thinking about words and stuff like that, you need to really sort of think about how people might search. And, you know, a lot of, of, of you know, doing marketing is, is kind of UX design skills. You know, user UX stands for user experience. You got to kind of, and you know, when we do UX design research, you know, we're thinking about the user and how they're using the system. What are they doing on the system? Well, the same thing with marketing and, and online you know, marketing is that you know, you're looking at words and what words are people typing in for, to find you. Again, the whole Matt Cutts uh, video was all about words, right? He talks about you know, Google makes billions of dollars off of selling words. That's all they do, sell words, 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 words. So, you know, watercolor artist is okay. You get some data. Can, you get the historical because this is very kind of historical. 
Then they got, of course, some sponsored links, which would be some ads, which are good. You know, you got you, we can buy this David Hockney book, a, a book for two thousand five hundred dollars. Wow, that book is two thousand five hundred dollars. Oh, it's signed by David Hockney. Or I'll go to his house in L.A. and sign it. We'll knock on his door and probably he'd probably come and sign it for me. He probably would. Um, who knows? Uh, and then, uh, of course, more ads here and ads there. Sometimes. You know, Google will look at your location and then start giving you results according to your location. So if we start coming down here, we might start seeing stores that are local that are selling information because they're going to be able to see where you're at. Oh, right here. California watercolor, original California art, fine arts. So they're recognizing that, hey, this IP address is in California. Let's start giving some information. So they're, they're going to start giving you that. Of course, there's a lot of social media like Pinterest coming up as well. So, you know, maybe a little bit more narrow might be Bay Area is, is very popular. Okay, and watercolor tattoo artist. And then, of course, they start giving you some results saying, hey, and what, where, why is this result coming up? Well, a lot of people might be searching for that, and that's sort of why they're giving you that suggestion. This is a popular word. So there you go. You can write that down. Oh. Watercolor Tattoo Artist Bay Area is, is probably um, very popular. That might be something I would buy if, I, of course, I'm selling ta tattoos, I guess. And so there you go. And, of course, now it starts recognizing, hey, uh, you're looking for a specific location. It starts giving you some things. Of course, tattoos are very popular. And, so, and of course, people are advertising for tattoo. Mm. No, eh, I don't know. That's, that's a good question. This could be, it could be, uh, yeah, there's a rating thing here. It's probably showing up because of rating. I don't know. This is kind of a new thing for me, this rating thing. They, Google really, you know, keeps changing things around how they do things. But again, most of the stuff you're going to start seeing then is more local stuff. There's your California watercolor thing here. These are probably local artists in the area. You know, we need to get my wife's to be up a little higher. And you can see the whoosh. This is just a, um, um, a, a random page with a lot of words on it. That's why that one's showing up and so on. So did you look at how the basic words are being used on a site? Did you, did you see that about the description tag, title tag? Yeah, we can go over that again. Okay, so, um, so let's just look at a link right here. So if we look at a link right here, you'll notice the blue one right here is the title of the website. So that's the title of the website. Of course, the link is right here. That is the actual letters that are in the address of the website or the domain name. And then, of course, you have a description tag right here, right there. So you have description, you have title, and you have um, um, and you have uh, 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 the the domain name right there. So we can go through, and I can um, uh, we can make a web page right now today, and we can I can show you where to put these things in. Okay, most people use um, WordPress, and so um, to put these things in, we use a plugin called Yoast. Yoast is a you know piece of software you add to WordPress that gives you boxes where you put these things in, and they show up. Let's let's do another one. Let's do of course something I know more of. Let's just do the Stud Finder, and again. You'll see that. Um, uh, let's just go to a, a page. I mean, my website doesn't show up at all. If I put in Zircon, it'll show up. So here's here's the main page, the home page of the website, and you'll notice this is the title tag, which is the title of the website. So that's just text that you put in when you're pro making the website. That's text you put in. It's called a title tag. This is the address, of course, and then this is the description. And notice, I'm I'm not I don't have a, a big long description, so I'm wasting space there. You know what I mean? You, we could put actually three, two more lines. Look at how many lines are here, or or Macy maybe down here. Look at this, three lines right there. Home Depot put. So you know, this one has only two lines. It looks like there's more here. There's dot dot dot, but it's not showing that. Maybe they're giving Amazon or Home Depot a little more because they're or they're 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 Amazon or they're Home Depot, but usually it's about two lines. 
Okay, see it right here. So, um, and see it right here. So that's called the description tag. That's just another box. When you're building a website, you should know what a description tag is. To write a nice description tag, of course, is you put key phrases in there that you think people would search. Right? Just like we were searching before. You need to do some research, find what words are working, who is searching for what. You can use Google tools to find out what are the popular words. We'll look at that in a little bit. We'll go into Google and say, hey, how do I find the popular words? Well, you can find the popular words by using Google tools or just doing like what I was doing before, which is simple research. You know what I mean? You can come here and say, you know, stud find, oops, or find wall, wall, wall studs. Okay. The other thing that um, Google has been doing a lot of lately is um, these questions right here. See these? So when you type in a question, it's going to give you this kind of box right here. Okay. So any question. So that's find wall studs. Um, so and then they they give suggestion to other people. See this as well. So as far as marketing wise, if if there's a question that goes along with your product or your service, you might want to type that in in your research so that you can see what comes up. What what is Google ranking as far as question, right? So you know, like um, how to hang a TV on wall. And again, you, get, you might get a question. This is here. You go. People also ask. See that as well. So questions online are very popular. A lot of people are searching for how to do stuff, right? How to change your brakes in your car. How to change your oil. Where's the best organic uh, restaurant, or something like that, right? People are a lot of people are typing in search engine questions. So you know that is actually a good way of doing research as well. It's not necessarily just typing in words, but asking questions. Um, yeah. The, um, Best, uh, what do we want? Best what? Best um, steak in town. There you go. The steak in town. Okay. You know, you get to Brazilian steakhouse. I didn't like that place. I know a lot of people like that. You guys, anybody been to the Brazilian one? They just, they just keep bringing you more and more meat. Benny Hanna? Oh, I don't know about that. I, yeah, I'm, it's fun, yeah, but I don't know if they have the best steak in town. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, there's Open Table, which is a is a is a service. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which one? Yeah, I know. Open. Yeah, of course. If they, you know, program it somehow that they get messages, you know. Outback Steakhouse, I think, uses their own system, and stuff like that. And uh, um, of course, TripAdvisor is going to give you. TripAdvisor is is very um, very popular. Mm -hmm. And um, like, I want to have a steak in Vienna. How did I get to Vienna? <laughs> mm -hmm. And of course, Yelp. And of course, the problem with Yelp is that you can pay Yelp to be, you know, you know that's already came out that you can pay Yelp to get rid of your bad stuff and, and keep your good stuff. I, oh, yeah, really? My uncle judged on Yelp. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. he was getting on bad Yelp, even though the guys in charge of like marketing and stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all yeah. So all the bad reviews are gone. Yes. Yes. The restaurant themselves cannot do that. So like we have a guy, like we have a guy in charge of like marketing and stuff, and he can go into the comments and the font and talk to the person and offer conversation, but he himself, like from the restaurant store, he cannot do anything with it. Like Yelp can do that. Yeah. Because that's what Yelp says is like restaurants. So restaurants can't, but they can. Marketing or agencies and things like that. Everything is kind of like 
Mm-hmm. You, they pay Amazon, yeah. You can pay Amazon to have good reviews. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or you can even use different products. Here, let's... You, you want to do that? We can go again. I love Amazon. And I hate Amazon. It is totally... Yeah, how about this? Let, let me just show you an Amazon affiliate. So we were talking about it. And so this is words again. So keeping with my word discussion, my word talk. So, um, you know, words are good in finding things. But, uh, again, there's deceiving people out there that will buy the words and make things that are, um, are deceptive when you use those words. Again, here we go. We'll type in stud finder again. Sorry, I keep typing that in, but that's what I do. I pretty much type in stud finder every day into Google, multiple times a day too, because then, you know I'm trying to sell this as best I can. So again, if we come here, you'll notice uh, again. Oh, there we go. So if I click on my link right here, it's not going to charge my company again because I already clicked on that link from this IP address. So remember, we clicked on there and I said, "Oh, just charging my company two dollars and sixty cents." That is, it's about two dollars and sixty cents right there. So if I click on that, it's not going to charge us again because we already did it from this IP address. So just keep that in mind, and you know, it's not going to do that because that's how they get away from you know, you know, back in the early days of like, oh, why don't we just you know, you know, uh, advertise and then somebody would just keep clicking the ad over and over again, or, or write a bot that keeps doing it over and over I again, and I'll make millions of dollars, right? No, that doesn't work. Uh, Google's pretty smart; <laughs> they know how to get around that because if you let's say you advertise on your website and Google will pay to add, for you to put ads on your website Google will give you money to put Google ads on your website right your sponsor or whatever you would think well I'll get as many people going to my website as possible we'll just write a, a bot that keeps doing it well, they, they've learned that a long time ago that they, they figured that out so again let's see how evil Amazon is uh, again they're they're advertising here and if I click on that uh, you know, they're, they're going to give you these products right here, which are just knockoffs that are, you know, cheaper than my product, of course. These are all came out within the last uh, three months. This one here, this one here, um, this one, this one right here, and this one. This one's uh, been out a little bit longer. This one is, actually has decent, um, uh, as far as these are legitimate reviews. But if I go over here to Let's say this one right here. It says 99 customer reviews right here. If I go down there, uh, uh, let's see if this is the right one. Um, maybe these are legitimate, but some of them are, are uh, paid. Yeah, they're all from September and October. Oh, there's a June one there. Maybe not that one. Yeah, they get discount or, or something, or that's how they, they pay you, is it? Not necessarily you get money for it, but they'll give you something in return for your good review or something like that. Um, uh, this one, maybe. Let me, 30, oh, that only has 32 reviews. Um, again, they stole my, my photo there, my copyrighted photo. I would love to sue them. Um, where's the reviews? Well, this is weird. there's one of these I was looking at actually that all the reviews were for a different product, but this is all all five reviews. There's no way. There's no way that everybody's getting all five reviews. There's no way. This is five stars there, five stars there. These are all paid reviews for sure. There's no way. So, you know, these are all paid reviews for sure. And so, you know, and they, of course they didn't even, and it doesn't work through brick. I can tell you that right now. My product doesn't work through brick. So anybody saying it works through brick, it's not going to work through brick. You know, it's, it's, it's totally deceiving, all of this stuff. And so you don't know what to do, right? It's, it's a very challenging thing online. Uh, here, let's look at some Amazon affiliates. Um, so 
we click through there and, and did you notice that Google recognized what I clicked on and started giving me more different results right here see that this this popped up after I after I clicked again questions are good to put into uh, Google I would say and then um, um, here this one right here so this best reviews right here you'll notice is an ad this best reviews is actually an Amazon affiliate and what I mean by that is this website is actually Amazon so they come over here and they say they're not Amazon but they're really Amazon and uh, well at the bottom it says you know you try and find out you know who are these people and why they do this you know what I mean and so well the reason why you can tell it's an Amazon affiliate because every link goes to Amazon see so if I'm sitting here and I'm looking at this, this is best of the best. What does that mean? It doesn't tell me. You know, it's like a movie. It's like a a Western, you know, movie name, right? <laughs> I'm thinking best of the best there. And then they got this, you know, and it's not telling me anything. This is not telling me anything. None of this stuff is telling me anything. You know, these these review things. I don't know. It's just made up stuff. You know, it's not even real stuff. You know, they just take data from the website and pros and cons, and then they say, oh, they review it. Uh, maybe it's not really I mean this is just, it's it's all bogus really most of it is and um what I like you know, you recommend I'm not gonna recommend anything so um again though you'll notice they're all going to Amazon so if I go and I click on this and I go to there and I buy this product the people from best reviews will get money it's called an Amazon affiliate and you can make an affiliate page too Anybody can do it. So you just make a website that has products. And even if I don't buy this product, let's say, I, I oh, I like the Stud Finder. It's great. It's wonderful. Why did it change? It just changed it on me, didn't it? So uh, I didn't buy this product, but, oh, I, I need some dog food. So I type in dog food, and, I, I, and of course, they make their own dog food now, Amazon. <laughs> they do, yeah. They do. They make their own dog food now. I can't remember which one of these is their own brand. One of these is. Oh. Mm -hmm. So let's just say I I click on this and I buy this dog food here and um, right here. The person from Best Reviews is going to get a cut of that. So even if I didn't buy the product that was there, I was the one who drove the traffic to Amazon, even if they bought something different. So. Again, getting back to uh, um, words, you know, ads, words that people type in. Um, let me let me just show you uh, 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 how to build a page. We'll build a page real quick and then um, show you where to put those, and then we'll take a break. And we'll come back and uh, talk a little bit more, and then we'll have some lunch, talk a little more, go home, watch some hockey. The hockey game today, right? Tonight. She knows. She's from Denver. <laughs> oh. She she likes the avalanche. You don't don't they, those people from Denver are very uh, hardcore avalanche fans. Okay, um, let me just show you. We were talking words for before, and uh, let's just review again. These are words that you see on people's websites, right? Again, this is how Google works. You got your you got your um, you got your title, you got your address, and you got your uh, description, and so. All this is done by when you're building a website. So let's just go into a website builder. And let me just show you. Uh, I use GoDaddy for my service. Okay, so I have uh, three properties. Uh, one of them is uh, my wife's website. If it works. So we have this property. She sells her watercolor. One of the problems is I, I need to, to, to turn on the uh, the security. I just I just changed the website and I need to re-update the security. So right now HTTPS colon doom doom. I'm not sure if this even works right now. Let me see. Yeah, see it's not working. So the S isn't working because I haven't set it up. I have to re-authenticate it, and I have to change where her website is and stuff like that. So the S is not working. And the reason why I'm, putting out, I'm put, pointing out the S is that Google will look at HTTPS and HTTP differently. 
So why is because they see them as two different websites? Because one is secure and one is, and they are actually two different ways of setting up when you're setting up the server. So, um, and I can show you that um, in a little bit. Uh, let me just go and, and again, let me show you how I make a website. Go. So, uh, you know, the main way to make a website today, most of the easiest ways is to use the um, WordPress. And so I'm going to go and, and make a WordPress uh, page so you can see how those words are put in. If I can type in my password properly here. And so uh, let's just go into, I didn't want to go there. Let's just go into um, where, where I want to go. I want a cPanel. <laughs> so I know you guys probably don't know any much about webs and web servers, but uh, how you manage a website, of course, is there's multiple things. First is the domain name, and of course, choosing a good name is very important. Um, usually, I'd like to choose a name that sort of says what it does. Like if I'm selling flowers, you know. It wouldn't be flowers.com. There's too many of those out there. But let's say I have a business in San Jose um, selling flowers. I might be San Jose Flowers Shop dot com or something like that. I, I'm a strong believer in location because people like to go into Google and type in location, don't you? Right? If you're looking for, you know, you talked about best steak in town. That was too generic. I was getting stuff from Vienna and Australia. But if I put in best steak in San Jose, I would be getting a lot more local things, right? So people like to type in local. Local, local, local. So I tend to put a domain. Now these are kind of generic. Uh, my son has this one. Uh, my wife just did that one. But it, it has her name in it at least. So if somebody types in her name, that, that may show up. Uh, me, I have my name in there. So on. But how you manage a site and how much does a domain name cost a year? Anybody know? It's around $14. Okay, so you never buy a domain name you just rent it from uh, ICANN is the people that manage it. So um, if you want to find out who owns uh, a domain name, and maybe you want to buy one, right? Maybe you, you, you find one online and you like it and you want to buy it and you can find out who owns it. You go to uh, who is, who is .net, I believe it's .net. There it is. And oh, it's just going to come up with Apple, yeah. But if let's just put in my zircon, see who owns that, and you put that in, and it'll tell you when it was first started, 1995, um, when it expires, because you can put in, hey, it's going to expire this day. Uh, where was it originally registered? And that's that's usually um, the first people that you bought it from. You can register a domain name for many, many people. My my Rasko I have Raskov.com that's registered at um, Dotster. And those other ones that you just saw there were registered through GoDaddy. And so, you know, um, you know, all this information is usually publicly available unless you pay extra money to try and make it private. But you can't make it everything private. Some of the things you can make private is these things about email, phone number, so that people aren't calling you on the phone. But, you know, every website, you have to have the basic this things, okay? Just by law, there has to be some kind of public record, right? It's like when you own a property, right? It's in the county register, right? This is the same thing. This is the web and domain names are public information, but the owner and the phone number and stuff could be private, but certain information must be public, right? Okay, so there's some stuff. Notice how it doesn't say owner and stuff like that here, um, but you can see that. So you can find out who owns and, and try and, you know, buy it or something like that if you really want. So that's called who is. Okay, so uh, um, so that's domain names. I didn't really want to talk too much about that. You know, you know, buying a good name is, 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 is some research. Uh, down here, uh, how you manage a server is called cPanel right here. So if I hit manage right here, it'll take me into an area where I can uh, go and manage um, cPanel administrator. And I can go and manage uh, websites through this. Some of the things you can do on websites, of course, is do the security. 
do the SSL that you saw. The SSL is this S right there. And you, so you can add that to a website and so on. And then um, I'm going to go into one of the one of my sites and let's just go into my wife's site right here uh, and build a page just so you can see. So uh, here's her her. So this is how we manage a site. So WordPress is a very easy kind of managing material. How it works is is a content management system. This is what it looks like when you go into it. Uh, when you're in there, you you'll notice there is a bunch of menus. So it's like a software that runs through the browser, and you can do it from anywhere in the world. Um, most people today use this to manage. Uh, you know, it has some good things and bad things. Some good things is that there's a template and it makes it easy to make a page. The bad thing is that you're stuck with the template and the template is, you know, you got if you want to adjust the template, you got to go into the code a lot of times. Uh, the other advantage to using WordPress to manage your, your online content is that you can add plugins. Probably the most used plugin that we use is called um, Yoast. And, um, she doesn't have Yoast here. Oh, she has Yoast. She got WooCommerce. Oh, here it's Yoast right here. So uh, we use Yoast to do all the marketing things that you just saw. So, um, you know, it'll tell you all kinds of other things about how many people are coming. So you'll notice that um, 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 there's a bunch of sp a bunch of spam or, or bots coming from Brazil right here, and it tells you the IP address. This is probably a computer that's trying to hack, and it, and it takes the IP address. So you know, there's a lot of hacking going on online. There's a lot of bots out there trying to steal your information. Um, so if I want to make a, a page, I can go into pages and make a new page. And let's just make a page real quick. And so I make a page on our website. I can give it a name. So remember the title. So, um, so let's write one real quick. I talked about key phrases and I sent you an email about key phrases. So usually what, after you come up with phrases for your website, you would put them in multiple places on the page so that Google sees, hey, you have a bunch of words that relate to that topic. Hey, let's rank you. Okay, so how Google ranks you in their organic link, and the, and the word organic means that you're not paying to be in Google, right? You're not paying. Organic means. So since my uh, uh, wife has uh, uh, watercolors, we can put in her name. If I can spell her name right. Oops, I can't. Oops, see, I can't. So, so something like this would be a good title. What is Google going to see? Well, her name, watercolor, artist, Bay Area. So those are good words. Thinking of words is very important. Put them in your title. That's again, if we go back to here and we put in water. Well, they want one word, so I probably should change that to watercolor artist. Oh, jeez. And so that would be this blue one right here. See it right here? Now, not everybody's first page shows up. You'll notice that this one right here is the about page. See how it has the name of the person and it says about right there. So this is not the home page of this person. This is the you know an about page. The home page is probably this one. Yeah, see. So not only do the first page of people's websites show up, but also the sub pages. So how do the sub pages show up? So again. Um, probably put this as one word. Do upper and lowercase letters matter in search? What do you think? It depends. <laughs> in some sense, yes. In some sense, no. So I don't, you know, there's no right or wrong answer to that. Um, according to Google, it should not matter, but um, I think it does. So according to Google, they say it shouldn't matter. But I still think it does. Okay, so if we made a, a, a website here, I would put an image on. So let me put an image on here. Uh, let me put a picture on there. So when we add an image, let's talk. Let's just say we want to put this beautiful image on there, or maybe um, this beautiful one right here. So if I put this image onto the page, 
some of the things you'll notice with the image, of course, is you have um, title for the image right here. Um, so right now it has thinking go F U. What? I don't know what that means. But that's the name of her file right here. See it right there? Of you? Oh, of you. Okay. Okay, so if you look there, you'll notice that it's just the name there, right? The name of the file. But that's not a very good title, right? Wouldn't it be better if we write, you know, um, what is this? This is the hummingbird. Hummingbird. Um, water. Color, is that one word? Watercolor, like that, right? Then you can give it a caption. Now, a caption's on the screen. And then alt text is very important. What is the alt text used for? The alt text is used for... Uh, screen readers. So if somebody can't see the picture, uh, you know, people that can't are blind and can't see the screen, the computer reads it to them. And so when it, when the computer reads and sees a picture, it needs to give a description to the people that can't see the picture. And so it reads the alt tag. So you put something in the alt tag that is um, descriptive. This is a, a maybe I might even put the same thing there, something like that. So when you put images on your screen, this is very important that you, you put things in here. And the reason why is so that it, it, it also ranks as well. Because let's do another search. Here we go. We're, we're in here already. Let's just go to Google. And then let's type in um, water color, color artist day area. Um, and then let's search, uh-oh, let's search images. Uh, so now that we're searching images, these images are starting to show up, okay? How do these images show up? Well, some of the ways that they rank them, these images to show up is, is by the words that you use in the name of, of, the, of the image, okay? So that image words that I'm typing in here, again, is another place that you need to put marketing words when you're making content. You put it in the title of there and then in the alt text. Now, you couldn't give it a caption. That's a picture, that, a text that goes underneath. That would be good if you want that. And you can give it a description, just like you give a description. Um, and then you can put copyright information as well. But you can then just insert into your page. And, uh, and we're in text mode. Here's visual mode. There you go. So it's on there. Next, I would probably write some text at the top of my page and let me just put some text in there let me hit return so I have a space so uh, the second most important thing so the first important thing to Google as far as ranking organically and the term organically ranking means that you are doing it uh, without paying uh, so the first one is of course the title that's the most important that's the blue link on Google right you saw that right the second one might be uh, um, either the, the title on the page. So um, on the on the screen right here, I, I might either duplicate this and write it a little bit differently maybe. Yeah, I could duplicate it and then put it there. They can be the same. Um, put a period after that. Uh, the other thing to make sure is that the text is not in in paragraph right here. You want the text to be in one, heading one. There you go. With the, now, that's awful big. And if it's too big, you can use heading two. But heading one, uh, Google sees that as the, the, probably the most important because it's the biggest text on the screen. And so it's going to say, hey, that, those text, that text is very important. We're going to rank you higher because of the words you use with heading one. A third important thing to ranking inside of Google, at least organically, uh, that we're doing here would be the name of the website. So right now, the way that WordPress works is that it's going to take the words you put in the title up here, and it's going to name the file that. No, that's not a good file name. Because, I mean, this is good, but it's too long. You can see it's right here. So this is called the permalink. permalink. And so to change the permalink, you can hit edit there, and I can change the, this is the name of the file. So we can just put in, I might even put in um, 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 so I might put in the name of the website maybe put a dash in between there like that 
So what am I looking for? Well, somebody's searching for her website and the hummingbird art. So instead of using the default, which is this, you can change the name here. And a lot of people don't do that. That's a very, very good way to get ranking is to use the permalink. So again, you got your title, you got your permalink, you put your text on the screen there. Last thing that's very important is to go and do the uh, uh, Yoast. So what is Yoast? Okay, so Yoast is the most popular. So if you go to uh, Yoast, Yoast is a plugin. Yoast is what we call SEO plugin, search engine optimization plugin is what SEO stands for. And that then you put into WordPress and you can take advantage of all their wonderful things that they have for you to do. Uh, if you go over here to the, um, here, here's where Yoast is. And so Yoast will go and give you, so doesn't this look like it does inside of uh, Google? See it right here? Gives you a look, see it right there? But of course, there's no description tag. Remember in Google, here we go, we'll look at it again. In Google. And what are we what are we looking for? Best steak in um, San Jose. There we go. And Yelp and uh, so, but you can see here's some uh, the description tag. Here's a description tag here. Here's a description tag right there. This is the name of the file, and that's the title. You saw me make this. So we got title. We got this. This is what you need to write next. So um, again, you can do that right here. You'll notice an edit snippet right here, and I can go in there and I can change the title if I want. Uh, you might want to go and, and you know take this title. This can be different than this actually if you want, but I could put that in there. Basically, it's taking the title that's up there, and you can even write more. And that's why it's orange. Notice when I'm working here, see how it's orange. This is in There we go. A little bit more words and I get green. The green says it's better because you added more words, right? So this is how it will look inside of um, there. You, what, what you're trying to say when it's orange is you, you didn't add enough. And same with uh, the description tag. Right now it says excerpt. It's trying to steal some text from the page. It would probably do that. But, um, you know, this can be uh, a 250 characters. We measure the description tag by characters. So... And I would use the same words like Bay Area and the same, oh, whatever, I'm not going to write the whole thing, but you get the idea. You can write, 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 write words that relate to all the keywords that you think that people would use to find your website. And um, when you're all done with all that, um, um, you can add some focus words. Focus words are words that are just random words that, you know, we, uh, we I would type in watercolor, um, bay area, um, and you don't have to put um, commas or anything in between. You just write random words. Okay, it'll Google so smart it'll put all that stuff together. You know what I mean? It knows what to do. It, it knows how to do things. So this is all the, the, you know, the basic things that you can do to a site. And when you're done, you can preview it online. Uh-oh. Preview it. Hopefully it previews. There it goes. And so my server is a little slow. So this is what it would look like on the Internet. Where's the menu coming from? Well, that's part of the, the template. So this is a template. And so we put in this, this, this and so on. So um, as you can see, this is very simple things and that will then rank you a little bit higher with all those words that I put in uh, in the organic search. So um, let's take a little break and go and get something at the farmer's market. Who, who's ready for a piece of fruit? One person's ready for a piece of fruit? Nobody else wants fruit? Okay, let's take a, a, a break.